It is time for Main Street Magazine on Robin Hood Radio. Of course, you can find Main Street Magazine spread throughout our tri-state area uh, for free pickup, but also you can find their website, which is MainStreetMag.com, MainStreetMag.com. And uh, at least once or twice a month, we're joined by uh, Thorin Christian's daughter, who uh, joins us. Uh, Thorin, it's nice to speak to you today. Nice to speak to you as well, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2020. And with that, we have the January 2020 edition of Main Street Magazine to talk about. First of all, uh, the the picture on the front. Yes. So I don't know if people notice we changed our masthead a little bit. Yeah. So uh, and it really pops against that white background. But uh, another uh, cover shot by our very own Olivia Marconic, and uh, it's white out with a black crow. It's, I, I love the well, – I, I, see, that's what I love about it. I love the distinction between the black crow and, and, and also also something about having a crow on, on a cover in, in January. <laughs> well, I have a little personal and a family uh, connection to crows and ravens. So, you know, I, I saw it and I loved it. And it's something that Libby and I have been uh, – we've been trying to find a spot for this photo for the last year or two. Um, but I, we took the angle of, you know, it's a new year, a new star. And uh, if you flip to page three where we have the description of the cover, you know, our first sa- thing right there is, you know, taking flight in the new year. So, you know, the crow is just dropping in on the new year for, in the picture. And I love, for people that don't know, crows are really, really smart. <laughs> they are, yes. Let's <laughs> just put it that way. All right, let's get into the, uh, into the magazine. Uh, once again, Main Street Magazine. And uh, speaking about smart, uh, he's been around a long time now. He's still young, but at one time he was, I think, one of the youngest mayors in the country. And uh, you've got a featured article uh, with Mark Molinaro, Bridging the Gap. Yeah, he was actually the first and youngest, or the youngest mayor in the country. At age age eighteen, he became the mayor of Tivoli uh, in Dutchess County, and uh, we had the honor of having Mr. Molinero come to our office, and uh, we had a just a nice conversation with him. Uh, Griffin started the conversation with him, and I kind of stepped in halfway through, and I was just listening. And you know, I, most of us. Well, here, let me preface this. Um, in the magazine, since we started about seven years ago, I've on purpose stayed away from politics. It's a very divisive topic for many, and I've never wanted that for us. However, this year we decided to take a different approach and to look at the people um, that are these politicians. You know, who, who, what do they believe in? Who are they? And Mark <clears throat> seemed like a he was an interesting guy to me as a person and what he has been doing and obviously running for governor. Uh, He became even more noticeable in the New York area here. And so starting with Mark, we're going to be having um, every other month or every month, depending on how we go, we're going to hand select uh, different politicians from the tri-state area, you know, from mayors up to higher ups. And we don't care if they're Republican, Democrat, independent or whatever, as long as we think that they're interesting people and it's more of a people profile. So we're very happy to launch that with Mr. Molinero, who's the Dutchess County Executive. And uh, just to ca- kind of let our readers get to know these people that represent them. It's interesting because when you think about the people that represent us, years ago, Brent Colley, not years ago, but a couple of elections ago, uh, he was going to run, I, I do believe, for the school board, but nobody on the Republican side had come up to run for mayor of Sharon. So mm-hmm. he decided, well, you know, uh, we shouldn't have an uncontested race, and he ran for mayor, and he won. Yeah. And he's been there, and he's been reelected. And when you look, and you're right, when you look behind, uh, the, take strip away the political personalities and take a look at the at the personalities of the people, especially uh, our local representatives, uh, they really have pretty interesting pasts to them becoming where they are. Yes. And I feel like it makes them more approachable, especially in an era of, where a lot of people don't have faith in the government, whether it be at the local level or all the way up to, you know, the top. Uh, and that's something we spoke with Mark about. And, um, and I, I said that to him and I said, you know, what, what's, what, 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 how can I believe in you or, you know, your fellow, you know, politi- politicians that are supposed to represent me. And, and he, so he told us a few stories and how his approach has always been to, you know, try to speak to people and that he has, you know, call him up, you know, uh, he does town, town hall meetings. He 
talks on the radio to make, you know, to make that connection with his constituents. And uh, so, you know, that answered my questions. And, you know, I, that doubt that I threw out there that it seems to be in, in our country right now, as well as locally. Um, and so I, I was curious to get to know him and his um, uh, kind of policies and how he approaches you and me, the voters. And uh, that is Mark Molinaro. Uh, I, I want to move over to uh, uh, to it, the second one, Game Changer. And when I started reading from it, uh, I'll, I'll just give listeners, just go for it. Those were the last thoughts I remember thinking before I rolled up and over a wooden ladder and attempted to huck a four to five foot drop on my mountain bike. <laughs> <laughs> and and by the way, folks, uh, a spoiler alert, it didn't work very well. But this is a, this is a this is a, a real interesting article. Ian is a fascinating guy, you know, besides being the principal of who's Tonic Valley Regional High School, he is a avid outdoorsman and a cyclist. And uh, he's very much uh, involved in or, you know, educating himself on nutrition and health. And so, uh, yeah, I had the same thought when I began reading that. And uh, but I, I it's funny when I was proofing the story from him, I had seen this movie and I had felt the same way. And, and after reading it, I was like, oh, man, we should all why are we eating meat? Why are we eating this and that? Uh, so it's, it had you kind of think about how you're living your life, meaning, you know, from the nutritional standpoint, or at least for me. And, um, you know, it's a great fit for start of the new year because this is when everyone has made their resolutions and is trying to live their best life. And so, you know, for some, this may work for others. They may take something from it and, or for, you know, others, they may just have them think about it and, and take a different look when they go grocery shopping next time. Well, it's just it, the, the, the great thing about it is um, that the start of the story and then boom, when it goes into what happened, that is just a great switch over as to the way you can look at your health in general and not necessarily anything to do with bike, how you can individually do it for your life and what you encounter every day. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, it's, it was, it was uh, like I said, it was a fun read for me to take a look at. It was, and it's, it's so, uh, the, the style that Ian has, what I love, one of the things that I love most about it is how approachable he makes it, because, um, like, when I watch the movie that he's referring to, you 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 realize that, wait a second, the, the people that are being featured are basically, it's their job, if you will, to be, you know, experts in nutrition, and they're, it's their job to be ultra-athletes. Well, for you and me, the average person, we, we can't do that all day, every day. So, you know, you kind of take a step back and it's like, all right, well, what can I take from, you know, watching these people, these experts, and that works for my life. So here Ian is, you know, has a full-time job, you know, taking care of hundreds of kids. And, you know, so this is kind of, I love the fact that how he spins it. Yes, talking about his uh, fail there and uh, how he shifts in what he does for his lifestyle. And it kind of for those of us who get bogged down in our everyday life, it, it, you know, there's something everyone can do to better themselves. We're speaking with Oren Kristen Dotter, and of course, this is Main Street Magazine on <laughs> Robin Hood Radio. Of course, you can find Main Street Magazine throughout the tri-state region as a free pickup at a lot of different locations, but also on the web at MainStreetMag.com. Now, I'll move on because your next story, Hope on the Horizon, is about Noble Horizons, and I think what is great about what you've done, because I think it's a lot of people that don't understand where Noble Horizons came from and how it was established. Uh, back, It was established, actually, back, I was one year out of high school, already working in Kingston, New York, uh, when, this, when this was established back in 1972. Yes, so... Noble Horizons is a wonderful community that um, it's not just for seniors or senior living or assisted living, but um, anyone can go there for rehab and, and all these uh, beautiful events that they have. They're so informative and, and interesting. So uh, they're tucked kind of behind. Uh, if you go kind of past the White Heart, they're tucked behind there and it, they sit on, you know, acres and acres of beautiful land um, with trails all over. And, I think it's a kind of a hidden gem in the Salisbury area. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, we, we felt it was a great piece to, and to kind of expose more of our readers to who may not know that it's there or all the services that they have to offer. And 
you know, they're a big employer also to the region. There are lots of wonderful people who work there and, and uh, contribute greatly to that community. And and the, the final article that we're going to talk about is it, what's interesting. Uh, I've been around <laughs> here uh, long enough uh, is is about Great Mountain Forest and about uh, how it got started, uh, Sterling Childs. Of course, I was friends with uh, many members of the Childs family from Norfolk. But this is because I, I bet you there's a lot of people out there have heard of the Great Mountain Forest and they, they're not really sure exactly what it is or where it came from. Precisely. And I was one of those until Mary uh, pitched me the story and we started talking about it and she was telling me more and more about it. And um, it, it's just a wonderful piece. And I love Mary's title for it. Um, it shows kind of the diversity of what they do and the amazing thing that they're doing, not just, you know, locally for the region, meaning environmentally, but also on a global scale. And uh, the research that's being conducted there, all the um all the animals there is amazing that the trees, the, just the everything there is, you know, wonderful that they're doing. Well, it's just part of our unique area that we have here. And uh, what what do you have on tap? Is just just a, I know it's the beginning of January, but you must already have a couple of story ideas for February, which is to me uh, the month that I have to get through to make the rest of the year nice. <laughs> <laughs> February is always a, uh, well, it's a short month this year, right? It's because it's a leap year. Uh, but February, we've had um, different themes for it throughout the years. I mean, for quite a while, it was our wedding themed issue. Um, but this year, we're focusing kind of more on uh, events and, and the like. So, you know, it could be anywhere from, you know, parties to um, theater, etc. So that's kind of a underlying theme, not to say that all of them, um, we'll be focused on that, but, you know, for example, Ian will be talking about some events at Mass Mocha, or at least that's what we were talking about. Um, Griffin will be doing part two, if, if you will, if we can call it that, of our political profile. And he is actually in a little bit heading out to, uh, interview the new mayor of Hudson, New York. Um, and, uh, that's all I'm going to give you for now. All We're right. going to have to tune in next time, you know, for our next issue. Just, uh, just a taste. So once again, uh, Main Street Magazine uh, is available throughout the tri-state region, uh, but again, also online at Main Street Mag, also MainStreetMag.com, but also on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And are you also on Twitter as well? We are, but we're not that active on there. <laughs> Twitter's a hard thing to stay active on. You really, that's, that's, for a business anyway. Well, that's Main, yeah. that's Main Street Magazine for January, and we will check with you in February. Sounds great.